Here are 22 things you may not know about Stardew Valley. Why do you get married in Stardew Valley? Is it for a free star drop? Is it to have kids and be a happy family? Until you realize that kids are worth nothing in this game because they are stuck in a dystopian childhood forever. Same. That's when I turn my kids into doves by placing a strange bun onto the statue of selfishness. But the kids have not forgotten me. On the 28th day of fall, your TV will have a new channel and if you click it, you will get this very eerie message. After seeing it, you can find some strange dolls at the statue of selfishness. These are your kids and they they want you dead. Did you know that if you pick a female character, you will be better off in the early game? Once you have sold items to the value of 5,000 gold, you will receive a letter from one of your parents. If you pick a female, you will get 500 gold, but if you pick a male character, you will only get a single cookie. The best way to get key gems is by completing the weekly key special order requests, but you can also get key gems by defeating enemies. The only problem is that it is highly unreliable. Or is it? Complete the danger in the deep quest, wear a burglar ring and eat some monster musk, and then enter floor 40 in the dangerous versions of the regular mines. In here you will find these wood type creatures, they are easy to defeat and have a 100% chance to drop a key gem, so you could reliably farm for key gems without completing those tedious key Key quests. With the addition of the latest 1.5 update, we can now choose our game seed. Why does that matter? Because really smart people can find incredible seeds like this one. This seed will allow you to get an ancient fruit on the first day in a brand new playthrough. All you need to do is use this seed, run over to Linus's tent and hold this artifact spot right here. And just like that, a guaranteed day one ancient fruit seed. There are some unique villager animations that you may have never seen before. After reaching 4 hearts with any of the villagers, you can go to the social tab and when you click on their portrait, they will play a cool little animation. Which of these are your favourites? I like Elliot's. Do you know what I absolutely despise? Receiving a debuff in this game. The slime debuff makes you move very slow and the debuff that the magma sparker gives is even worse. But there is a way to never get debuffed ever again. All you need to do is wear the mermaid boots and wear a single immunity band. This will make you absolutely immune to all debuffs in the game. It's quite helpful. Do you want something very unique on your farm? Just plant a mushroom tree seed, wait for it to fully mature and then chop it down until there's just a stump like this. Then place a torch behind the mushroom tree, would you look at that, it's a candle. This would be great for themed farms. If you watch many of my videos, you'll see I always pet my animals with a piece of hay in my hands. This will prevent the animal pop-up from occurring when you pet the same animal twice and save you quite a bit of time. But what if you only have deluxe farm buildings and can't easily get some hay? Just place a bomb next to the auto-fed hay, it will destroy the hay, thus allowing you to use the hay hopper. This is also useful if you want to store some hay in a chest. Do you know what is an amazing feeling when you crack open an Omni Geode and out comes a Prismatic Shard? But what if I said you could get another one for free? When you get a Prismatic Shard by cracking open a Geode at Clint, immediately place an Omni Geode into a Geode Crusher. This will guarantee that you get another Prismatic Shard. This also works for Rhythmor and anything that can come out of a Geode really. The dangerous versions of the mines can be a very fun place, you can farm a bunch of useful resources and the difficulty really does make it more fun. Until you meet these toxic ghosts, they pack a punch, move extremely fast and worst of all they can give you a debuff that prevents you from eating or drinking anything. The nauseator debuff, fortunately we can remove this by simply drinking ginger ale. I wish I knew this earlier. Do you hate the placements of your chests? Like seriously, look at this. Whose great idea was this? Oh, it was mine. Anyway, moving chests can be really tedious as you can't pick up a full chest. You'll have to empty it out and then pick it up. That's just not gonna work for me. Instead, ram your face into the chest with an empty hand until the chest jumps over any obstacle and slowly move it to a better spot. This works every time. When you die in the mine, someone will steal your items. We don't know who it is, but for some reason we can head to the Adventures Guild and pay to retrieve them. But those suckers are only open from 2pm and it's really far from your farm. Luckily, you can phone Marlin and ask him to send you one of the items in the mail. You can only do this after completing the Magma Sprite Monster Eradication Goal, but this is still pretty convenient if you ask me. Getting to the Skull Cavern as early as possible is really important if you want to succeed and get tons of Iridium Ore. Luckily we can use a Desert Warp Totem to get there at 6am. That is incredible, but if you do this, Pam is technically not in the desert, right? So what happens when you drive the bus home? Well, it turns out that you will be the one driving the bus, but let's be real. Do you have a bus license? Does Pam have a bus license? 
If you don't have access to desert warp totems yet, there is something else you can do to get to the desert a little bit earlier. Just place a chair right over here by Pam's trailer and another one right over here by the bus stop entrance. This will cause Pam to sprint to work faster, saving you an absolute tiny amount of time worth. Have you ever received the treacherous exhausted debuff and didn't have any muscle relaxers on you but it's still really early into the day and you want to continue your adventure? Unfortunately eating normal food does not remove the exhaustion debuff but kissing your spouse does. Let me know if you would ever actually use this though. Alright so you know that you can drink coffee and eat spicy eel to get a double speed buff allowing you to zoom around the valley at incredible speeds. And this is a serious question, why does the buff apply to your horse? When you get onto a horse with speed buffs your horse will magically run faster but the horse didn't drink the coffee, explain that. You can open up the emote window by pressing Y key on the PC and holding the right joystick in on console. Most of these emotes are really cool and I tend to use them a lot but they are more than just these. Just hover over an emote, right click on it to change the emote. Look at this massive list of emotes, now you don't need to be an emotionless log anymore. The Stardew Valley Annual Fair is by far one of my favorite festivals. There are so many things to do at this festival that you might never realize that there is a top part that you can visit as well. And here you can click on the grill to get a free survival burger. I don't know about you but I love free food. Here is something that most people don't know about. Build one of these fish ponds and fill it up with crabs. Crabs aren't actually the fish to place in fish ponds when compared to lava eels. But once you have 10 crabs in the fish pond and the next time you talk to Willy, he will give you a pearl. Pearls are universally loved gifts and one of the rarest items in the game. These things are just really hard to find. If you are like me and have tons of deluxe sheds all filled with different processing machines then you know the pain of manually entering each and every shed to check if they are done processing. Fortunately there is something you can do to make this problem go away forever. Place a single processing machine at the door of each shed and fill it up at the same time that you filled up all the machines inside of the shed. Now you can easily walk past your sheds and know exactly when everything is ready. The mutant bug layer is absolutely useless right, you come here once to get the dark talisman and never again. Well look at how big this place is, use it and abuse it. Place kegs, preserve jars and even crystallariums here. These will be safe here and keep your farm nice and clean. Sitting on a chair will cause your game to pause for a tiny bit of time so if you cycle chairs like this you can travel around the world with no time passing by. But is it worth it? If you are enjoying this video then you need to watch this video with 30 Stardew Valley tips. Subscribe for more Stardew Valley videos but for now I will see you in the next video.